Hey everybody, welcome to another episode with us. Um, so last week's episode, we were traveling around in the UK and exploring and visiting my brother on the way back from South Africa to the boat. Um, and Ricky had to sail into Martinique, well, fly into Martinique by himself because unfortunately I couldn't get a visa. Although I have a Schengen visa, it's not part of the Schengen area. So Martinique is part of the EU because it's French, but it doesn't fall under f like France, Italy, Spain, all that stuff. So I needed a separate uh, visa, kind of like an extension on it, um, which allows me to go to the French islands, which kind of doesn't make sense, but it is what it is. I couldn't get an appointment until July and that's way too late. So um, we had to make another plan and the plan was Ricky flies into Martinique because he has a Portuguese um, passport. So that allows him to travel so freely, which makes me super jealous. He flew into Martinique and sailed the boat down to St. Lucia, which is the island just below. And I flew into St. Lucia to meet him. But when Ricky got to the boat, we didn't know what state it would be in. So check it out. We bought an old abandoned catamaran spent two years rebuilding her and embarked on a 7,000 mile journey across the Atlantic Ocean to our dream cruising grounds, the beautiful Caribbean. Subscribe below and follow the adventure as we explore our way up the Caribbean chain of islands to the beautiful Bahamas. Floors feel dry. That's a good sign. Check the bulges. <laughs> bulges are spotless. Okay, that's very good news. Batteries. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Freezer stayed on the whole time. <laughs> Everything's ice cold. Good. Oh, so happy to f be back. Oh, little damage there. She, she leaked a lot. Okay, gotta get. What is that? A piece of paper. Let's stay down. Okay, I've gotta get that repaired ASAP. We knew this window was leaky. It's the only one that leaked. Could, didn't have enough time to do a decent repair on it. Okay, everything stayed open, not much mold. She's not looking bad except for that window. Gotta get that window sorted out as soon as possible. Everything else. Everything else looks good. Looks actually really good. Perfect. So it's 5.30 in the morning. We're leaving Fort de France. That's Fort de France behind us. And um, I probably cut the mooring ball at, or the loose of the mooring ball at about uh, just past five. And we're gonna head down. There's no wind at the moment because we're still completely sheltered by the island. We've got a lot of rain coming for today. It's raining right now. As you can see, just everywhere there's another one coming. And there's Fort de France. So we were out there. Solo trip to St. Lucia. And then pick up Simone. She's flying in tomorrow. And then happy days. Going down to Grenada. Bottom super dirty. Got both engines running. 2000 RPM. Five knots. She's dirty, but we didn't have time. Well, I didn't have time. It's literally just land one day to get everything kind of half organized, drop a rental car off, get a cell phone contract and or a cell phone SIM card and leave the next morning. So yeah, that's what happens when you gotta get the cheapest flights, you gotta you gotta hustle. So let's have a good hopefully hoping for a good sale. Wind this afternoon is gonna pick up to about 24-25 knots. 
so hopefully we'll be really close to Rodney Bay by then um, just because it's coming from the opposite side so we're going to head on okay so as my mind told me you should jump in and check the intakes we've got the first overheating engine um, so I know it's the intake um, nearly dead sure that it's the intake we're pulling just behind this little area we've actually anchored here before just drop anchor I'll show you what it looks like so right over there just gonna drop anchor there quickly dive in the water clean out the intakes and then fire up that engine again and just make sure everything's good okay so just got out the water it looks like it was the intakes they're a little bit blocked up not too hectic actually the starboard was worse than the port side and the port side's the one that went off so that should be good we'll hit the road we'll pick up anchor now this is where we are I just dropped anchor here at the back we're heading off that way lost about say about half an hour 45 minutes there but rather this than losing both engines when we're out there let's get a move on don't forget to subscribe below if you haven't already and click on the notification bell to alert you when we upload a new episode and like this video as well as share it with your friends and family it's a free way you can support our channel okay so the wind picked up we're up to about 20 23 knots and luckily i would reached early the sea is starting to show a little bit of white horses we've got a squall coming a decent sized squall the rest is rock and roll, baby. Woo! Eighteen, eighteen miles to go to Rodney Bay. So when the wife's not on board, solo sailing. This is solo sailing. Everyone eats out of cans. So this one is. Uh, Marty, you told me about this one. I'm gonna give it a test. Hopefully it's good. Sardines and tomato sauce. Let's give it a bash. No bread, because I'm being healthy this season. So, let's taste this. They don't look too bad. It's a little tomato -y. This could do with like Tabasco sauce and pepper on it. to go good morning everyone so I arrived yesterday and I didn't get time to film anything because it was kind of rush because I wanted to get checked in yesterday I want to try and rent a car so I can fetch some mode today but I didn't get a car um, they're all taken up I got a guy with a taxi that can possibly take me down pretty expensive I think about a hundred dollars but I don't know how long the journey is so maybe that's why and, um, and that's US and then so I just dropped the dinghy yesterday climbed in the water cleaned the through hole for the water maker the other through holes open all the valves pretty much recommissioned the internal workings of the boat so no like bulge bumps and all of that was already set up and then anchored up here really up close to the town this is see everyone mostly everyone's behind that's just because it just gives me more I'm a really light sleeper so it helps out a lot it was the first for me on Lady Africa sailing her solo down here it was a good sail 
Uh, we did motor a little bit because the hole's so dirty to try and just keep up a good speed. Um, I knew I wanted to check, get in here before 2 o'clock so that I could still do a check-in. And uh, that took two hours because of the medical that I had to go do and there was a long queue. I'm going to go see if I can find a rental. And I need to also go see if I can fill up the dive tanks to, to do a whole scrub tomorrow. Okay, so good news. The lady picked up the phone for the car rental. She has a car, 150 EC a day, which is about 50 US a day. It's not the cheapest, but it's not, not the worst prices you pay. And it is kind of typical 40 to 50 US a day renting from a company on the in the Caribbean islands. That's pretty normal. You rent locally and some, pri some guys will do it. So private rentals, you can rent as low as 20 US a day and we have done that before so but um that's a whole nother thing and it's kind of agreement between you and him his insurance needs to cover you so you need to be aware of that but sometimes when it's a local car usually it's kind of a little bit of an older model no air con no electric windows or they don't work but hey it's four wheels and it's a small island so you don't need too much that's from my view so we'll go in there, 8 o'clock she says she's going to be there, so we'll go in there, send her all my stuff and see if we can get the car booked. If not, I've got a backup plan, which we'll is take the cab to go fetch them up. It's still pretty early, it's about half past seven, so not much is open yet. But this is our dinghy dock where we tie up, and then we're going to go to the car rental place. So today was a bit of a crazy day. Went to go get the car, got a car all good. Guess what I found on the floor? Purse. Gotta track the lady down that lost it, shame. Uh, she's definitely a resident, yeah. So I went through her little things, obviously I have to, to find her. I tracked her down by Facebook. I think I got the right person. I'm gonna send her a message saying, hey, if you lost something today, send me a message of what it is, what color and all of that and I'll meet up with you. Um, it's the right thing to do. Only the cash that they lose, but documents, driver's license, everything else that goes with it. So that's a huge, huge pain in the ass. So I'm gonna drop her a message and hopefully we can find her and bring her things back. How the heck is that thing still floating? That's the guy that just came and sell fruit to me. My goodness. That's insane. The plan to, I'm gonna go back to where I found the purse and hopefully she's gonna be somewhere around, walking around there. I kinda know what she looks like now because I checked on Facebook because her ID is definitely out of date. Um, so hopefully I can find her looking around, trying to find it. So let's hustle and get there quickly. I've looked everywhere around here. Yeah. I don't see no sight of her. I dropped a message on Facebook. So I'm hoping that'll work and she'll get back to me. I think it's her. So hopefully we can get it back to her. I found her where I found her was actually right over here. So hopefully we can find her and get this back to her. So I just got to the airport now. We're gonna pick up Simone. And this is the end of the runway. And we're gonna see her coming in. She's like five minutes out. So then once we, once I see her, yeah, I'll drive around, it's about 11 minute drive. And then just pick her up and cruise north. It was quite a long drive. It's about an hour and a half, hour 45 minutes. It's a lot of windy turns. It was pretty cool to see too. I was looking so forward to being back on Lady Africa again and seeing Ricky after being apart for a few days. How does it feel to be back on the boat? Not so good. Why? A lot of work. It always reminds me if I start another thousand. A lot of work. So where are we off to now? Where are we and where are we off to now and, and what has happened in our lives oh you'll have to wait and see maybe we're getting a brand new catamaran sponsored 
Or maybe we're moving on to 50 foot mono. Or maybe... You'll have to stay tuned for more episodes because we're going to let it go. We're going to let everyone know soon. That's your plan. Yeah, that's my plan. People been wondering. We had to travel for some personal things, which what we're going to let you in on, but at the moment we can't tell you. But at the moment, I sailed down from Martinique. We're in St. Lucia, getting the boat clean, getting everything good, going down to Grenada. And yeah, stay tuned. <laughs> can't tell you the rest. <laughs> yeah. But right now we have to go give an our rental car. We're probably going to get a smoothie for, you know, good motivation. Motivation to scrub and the hole. There is a crap ton of work we have to do on this boat. We have a lot of growth on the hull. The You're about to see the most insane hull clean ever. And we have a lot of clean, uh, hull clean, well we have hull clean, but we also have a lot of scrubbing on the inside because we got a lot of What money. are we harvesting on the outside? I haven't even showed you yet. Oysters. We got oysters. So we're going to have oysters Martinique for dinner. oysters. So you guys are all invited. We're harvesting them tonight off the hull. No, you can't eat them. Can you eat oysters off the hull? Can you eat them? Probably not. They probably would probably taste like crap because they're eating literally. I would not. I wouldn't eat them. <laughs> I've, seen where, I've oysters seen where oysters, oysters grow, grow on well. On oysters poop. grow well in the most nasty areas. Yeah, no, we're not eating them. Yeah. yeah, no. But we eat them at a restaurant and they grew in the poop area too, probably. If I'm not mistaken, I think the Thames was actually one of the biggest places for harvesting oysters. And New York. Um, uh, and we we just came back from seeing that. So, but you're also gonna see us in London because we stopped in London. So yeah, let's go. Let's go get the. The London back. stop was actually yeah, but the we'll London, let you guys know. The London stop was worth every. It was a technical stop. It was a technical stop, but it was a, a good stop because we got to see London a, and my brother and a break from everything that's been going on that we will let you know. Mm. The hole looks like poo poo. Stop Probably compared to what it was, but was it real rough? This whole side was completely looked like it was aged and rusted. This is the barnacle side. I'm surprised at how much actually came off with the sail, to be honest. This is Barnacle side. Do you have a proper scraper? I don't know. Oh, so you didn't buy one? I don't know. Okay, then we don't have one. Check this old man. Oh, Yana. Oh, can you stretch your leg? <laughs> Wait, hun. Hun, your hand. Yes. Come. Oh. Just push up on that leg. <laughs> it's so hard. Oh. I don't know how Alan feels. It's not that thing. It's not so. Yes, we're like old people. We haven't done this for a while, evidently. Ricky had no faith that I could carry both tanks, so I showed him how it's done. Big strong lady coming through. Don't bump to other people's cars, eh? Watch your traffic. A little rental. All done. So strong. So we dropped off the car and now we're heading off to our smoothie so we can get some power because he is mm. nice and lazy today. Yeah. Super lazy. I say St. Lucia is like <coughs> a combination of Martinique's infrastructure. infrastructure. There we go. And Grenada's vibe. Yeah. So 
It's but quite nice. Yeah. Expensive. It's the hardware store. Ah. Yeah, everything is expensive. And so we've come to the end of another episode. If you guys were wondering what happened to the infamous purse that Ricky picked up, what happened was he tried to get in contact with the lady. She hadn't replied for two or three days. He then messaged someone who had the same surname as her on her um, Facebook, assuming it could be her family. They also didn't reply. So what we did is we took, before we left, um, we took the purse to the police station and dropped it off there and then told them that we found it in the parking lot because I mean we can't hold on to her purse while we're traveling um she might think we stole it or something so yeah we dropped it off at the police station and then they can try and get a hold of her or if she messages us we can just tell her we dropped it off at this police station she can collect it there don't forget to like and subscribe below if you haven't already and if you'd like to join our patreon family you can do so by clicking on the link above or below we just give updates on there and pretty much some what's happening in our lives that we don't always show necessarily up to date on youtube so you can see what's been going on with our lives in between so if you don't want to become a patron check that out have an awesome week guys and look forward to seeing you next week